Wednesday, 22nd. Gentle breezes at east by south and clear weather. We had not steered above three or four miles along shore to the westward before we discovered the land ahead to be islands detached by several channels from the mainland. Upon this, we brought two to wait for the yawl and called the other boats on board and after giving them proper instructions sent them away again to lead us through the channel next the main and as soon as the yawl was on board made sail after them with the ship. Soon after, we discovered rocks and shoals in this channel, upon which I made the signal for the boats to lead through the next channel to the northward, laying between the islands, which they accordingly did, we following with the ship, and had not less than five fathoms, and this in the narrowest part of the channel, which was about a mile and a half broad from island to island. At four o'clock, we anchored about a mile and a half or two miles within the entrance in six and a half fathoms clear ground. Distance from the islands on each side of us one mile, the mainland extending away to the southwest, the farthest point of which we could see bore from us south forty eight degrees west, and the southernmost point of the islands on the northwest side of the passage bore south 76 degrees west. Between these two points we could see no land, so that we were in great hopes that we had at last found out a passage into the Indian seas. But in order to be better informed, I landed with a party of men, accompanied by Mr. Banks and Dr. Solander, upon the island which lies at the south-east point of the passage. Before and after we anchored, we saw a number of people upon this island, armed in the same manner as all the others we have seen, except one man, who had a bow and a bundle of arrows, the first we have seen upon this coast. From the appearance of the people, we expected they would have opposed our landing, but as we approached the shore, they all made off, and left us in peaceable possession of as much of the island as served our purpose. After landing, I went upon the highest hill, which, however, was of no great height, yet no less than twice or thrice the height of the ship's mastheads. But I could see from it no land between south-west and west-south-west, so that I did not doubt but there was a passage. I could see plainly that the lands laying to the north-west of this passage were composed of a number of islands of various extent, both for height and circuit, ranged one behind another as far to the northward and westward as I could see, which could not be less than twelve or fourteen leagues. Having satisfied myself of the great probability of a passage through which I intend going with the ship, and therefore may land no more upon this eastern coast of New Holland, and on the western side I can make no new discovery, the honour of which belongs to the Dutch navigators. But the eastern coast, from the latitude of 38 degrees south, down to this place, I am confident was never seen or visited by any European before us. And notwithstanding I had in the name of His Majesty taken possession of several places upon this coast. I now once more hoisted English colours, and in the name of His Majesty King George the Third, took possession of the whole eastern coast, from the above latitude down to this place, by the name of New Wales, together with all the bays, harbours, rivers and islands situated upon the said coast. 
after which we fired three volleys of small arms, which were answered by the like number from the ship. This done, we set out for the ship, but were some time in getting on board, on account of a very rapid ebb tide, which set north-east out of the passage. Ever since we came in amongst the shoals this last time, we have found a moderate tide, the flood setting to the north-west, and ebb to the south-east. At this place is high water at full and change of the moon, about one or two o'clock, and riseth and falleth upon a perpendicular, about ten or twelve feet. We saw upon all the adjacent lands and islands a great number of smokes, a certain sign that they are inhabited. And we have daily seen smokes on every part of the coast we have lately been upon. Between seven and eight o'clock a.m. we saw several naked people, all or most of them women, down upon the beach picking up shells, etc. They had not a single rag of any kind of clothing upon them, and both these and those we saw yesterday were in every respect the same sort of people we have seen everywhere upon the coast. Two or three of the men we saw yesterday had on pretty large breastplates, which we supposed were made of pearl oyster shells. This was a thing, as well as the bow and arrows, we had not seen before. At low water, which happened about ten o'clock, we got under sail and stood to the south-west, with a light breeze at east, which afterwards veered to north by east, having the pinnace ahead, depth of water from six to ten fathoms, except in one place where we passed over a bank of five fathoms. At noon, Possession Island, at the south-east entrance of the passage, bore north fifty-three degrees east, distant four leagues. The western extreme of the mainland in sight, south forty-three degrees west, distant four or five leagues, being all exceeding low. The southwest point of the largest island, on the northwest side of the passage, bore north seventy-one degrees west, distant eight miles. This point I named Cape Cornwall, latitude 10 degrees 43 minutes south, longitude 218 degrees 59 minutes west. And some low islands lying about the middle of the passage, which I called Wallace's Isles, bore west by south half south, distance about two leagues. Our latitude by observation was 10 degrees 46 minutes south. Thursday, 23rd. In the p.m. had little wind and variable, with which, and the tide of flood, we kept advancing to the west-northwest. Depth of water, eight, seven, and five fathoms. At half-past one, the pinnace which was ahead made the signal for shoal water, upon which we tacked and sent away the yawl to sound also, and then tacked again and stood after them with the ship. Two hours after this, they both at once made the signal for having shoal water. I was afraid to stand on for fear of running aground at that time of the tide, and therefore came to an anchor in one quarter less seven fathoms sandy ground. Wallace's Islands bore south by west half west, distant five or six miles, the islands to the northward, extending from north 73 degrees east to north 10 degrees east, and a small island just in sight, bearing northwest half west. Here we found the flood tide set to the westward, and ebb to the contrary. After we had come to anchor, I sent away the master with the longboat to sound who, upon his return in the evening, reported that there was a bank stretching north and south, upon which were three fathoms water, and behind it seven fathoms. We had it calm all night, 
and until nine in the morning, at which time we weighed with a light breeze at south-south-east, and steered north-west by west for the small island above mentioned, having first sent the boats ahead to sound. Depth of water, eight, seven, six, five, four, and three fathoms when upon the bank, it now being the last quarter ebb. At this time, the most northernmost islands we had in sight bore north nine degrees east. The southwest point of the largest island on the northwest side of the passage, which I named Cape Cornwall, bore east, distant three leagues. This bank, at least so much as we sounded, extends nearly north and south. How far I cannot say. Its breadth, however, is not more than one quarter or at most one half a mile. Being over the bank, we deepened our water to one quarter less seven fathoms, which depth we carried all the way to the small island ahead, which we reached by noon, at which time it bore south, distant near half a mile, depth of water five fathoms. The most northernmost land we had in sight being part of the same chain of islands we have had to the northward of us since we entered the passage, bore north 71 degrees east. Latitude in by observation, 10 degrees 33 minutes south. Longitude, 219 degrees 22 minutes west. In this situation, we had no part of the mainland in sight. Being now near the island, and having but little wind, Mr. Banks and I landed upon it, and found it to be mostly a barren rock, frequented by birds such as boobies, a few of which we shot, and occasioned my giving it the name of Booby Island. I made but very short stay at this island, before I returned to the ship. In the meantime, the wind had got to the south-west, and although it blowed but very faint, yet it was accompanied with a swell from the same quarter. This, together with other concurring circumstances, left me no room to doubt but we had got to the westward of Carpentaria, or the northern extremity of New Holland, and had now an open sea to the westward, which gave me no small satisfaction, not only because the danger and fatigues of the voyage was drawing near to an end, but by being able to prove that New Holland and New Guinea are two separate lands or islands, which until this day hath been a doubtful point with geographers. <laughs>